Well, Gus has already found his home for the rest of this episode. Gus, Gus, you so happy? You got you a new bed you can hang out on? Yeah, it's pretty comfortable. Hey everyone, welcome back to Epic Cars. And today I'm working on the F100 project again. I'm getting ready to pull out the carpet, the seat, and just get everything kind of out of the inside because, yep, look what's underneath here. When you can see the floor, that ain't good. So that's probably the biggest project that I'm gonna be working on on this episode is cutting out these floorboards and welding in some new ones that I got. Part of that process has to um, deal with not only cutting it out, but addressing this issue right here, which is the uh, cab mount, the front cab mount that's rusted out on both sides. And it's causing the truck to basically kind of bow here in the middle. So you can see by this door gap, what I'm talking about, it's tied up top and it gets wider and wider and wider uh, as it goes down. The passenger side is even more noticeable. Again, look up here, how tight it is. And then, whoa, Grand Canyon down there. And uh, the huge reason why this side's a little worse than the driver's side is it doesn't have anything supporting it. This entire body lift puck, bolt, everything is gone. And the entire bottom of this cab mount is rusted out. Now this is a very, very common issue on these bump side Fords. It's just a bad design. You know, there was an access panel right here and uh, it would typically fall off or people wouldn't get them screwed on enough and water would just be sprayed in there from the tire and it would just sit there and collect. And all this water just ended up gathering here and rotting this whole thing out. And then this ends up happening. And your entire front of your cab just kind of sits lower than the rest of your truck. So you can see this passenger side is just, you know, the worst offender as far as the cab mounts are concerned. That cab is sitting down, which uh, causes none of the body lines to line up. And on this side, same thing, cab mount, this is kind of falling down while the uh, fender is staying flat. And then you've got a little hiccup right there in the back where the bed is actually misaligned to the cab. So that has to also deal with the body lift that's on this truck. Some of the body lift pucks are completely missing. And so it's just causing this entire truck to be, you know, almost look like a zipper going up and down uh, the whole way back. And so nothing's lined up. So that's one of the big projects that I wanted to get done with this truck. I'm gonna be selling this truck and I just wanted to make sure it was in really good shape and more importantly, ran good and looked good whenever I sell it. First things first though, we've got to address the rust. We've got to cut out these floorboards and we've got to correct those cab mounts in order for this thing to work. So got to gut the interior. And in the process, I was working under the hood the other day and noticed that some of the heater hoses were kind of hooked to themselves. This hose that comes out of the heater core into the top of the engine was actually looped and, and uh, hooked right back into the heater core. And then this hose that's now hooked into the heater core was coming off the front of the engine, the water pump, and actually just going right back into the top of the engine. So I disconnected everything and put it back the way it should be. And lo and behold, somebody had done that on purpose because when I started up the truck and it actually got up to operating temperature, I noticed a little stream of antifreeze, you can kind of see the remnants there, started coming down the inside of my cab. Well, that's a telltale sign that the heater core is bad, and so I have to remove this heater blower unit and replace it uh, and put in a new heater core. So that's what I've ordered here. This is a heater core uh, for a Ford truck, and probably pretty similar to most vehicles. Um, this is the part, actually, how it sits in the firewall. So these are the two tubes that come through the firewall and those hoses hook into that I showed you earlier. And this sits here and it's basically just a little radiator. Uh, your fresh air comes in through this side. Uh, it gets either pulled or pushed depending on what side your blower motor's on and then actually comes out through your vent. So that's how a heater works in your car is it's actually using the antifreeze and the hot water or the hot fluid in your system and your engine block to pass through a radiator and then it heats your car. Hey Gus, you come up here to join me. And then while I was in there, just because it wasn't really that much more money, I went ahead and got a new uh, fan motor for the blower. You can see it sitting right there. That's the old one, this is the new one. While you got it out, you might as well look at things and change things if you can. Good old made in China here. One of the things I'm gonna look at is like fan blades themselves and things like that. Man, he just wants to get in the middle of all this. Uh, and just clean it out. It's probably full of leaves and, you know, who knows kind of stuff. So 
Uh, probably the hardest part on the um, actual heater core installation is getting these hoses attached and then getting the uh, levers, the cables attached correctly to where you've got it operating right. So whenever you take it apart, kind of pay attention to which one's which. Man, Gus is all in my business. Gus, what are you doing, buddy? Yeah, you're just going to just get in my business all day long? So we've got a lot of work to do. First things first is taking out everything in the interior, uh, welding in the new floor panels, and then obviously working on those cab supports, and then working on heater and just kind of making it a, a drivable truck again and functional. Man, Gus is getting so big. He came to us as a kitten, but man, he's getting to be a really big cat. Um, there's the other one. Baby, she showed up the other day. She's already actually already had kittens, and so that's fun. Uh, when people start dumping cats at your house. What's going on, buddy? You having fun? Yeah, he's never been in this truck before, so he's exploring. Gus Gus is actually probably the only cat I like. I've never liked cats whatsoever. I'm kind of a dog guy. But what's interesting about Gus Gus is he kind of acts like a dog. I don't. It's I know it's weird, but he'll he'll just follow you around and he'll call, he'll come when you call him and he kind of obeys orders. He's just a cool cat. So. I haven't converted to a cat person yet, but I'll, uh, I'll convert to a dog cat, or should I say cat dog person. Mid 90s seat coming out. The pride of workmanship that went into this. I mean, this guy, whoever put this Lowe's brand special carpet in here did a pretty good job. I mean, they, they went ahead and cut out holes for the seat belt brackets and things like that. I mean, they didn't just haphazardly put this in here they did a pretty good job i mean they made sure it was all tucked behind there and uh but it is luxurious shag carpet so here you go <laughs> you got a little fred flintstone action going on over here it's actually i don't know if this is well yeah this is this is probably worse than the driver's side the driver's side's really bad but uh, passenger side is terrible. Here's a look at the floor pans I've got in. I can't remember where I got these guys. I think I'm, it was either LMC truck or might've even got them off eBay. I'm not really sure. Uh, they seem to be pretty sturdy, nicely formed. They fit in here quite, quite nice so far, but obviously they're oversized for a reason. Uh, so they don't actually fit flush right now, but this is essentially how they fit into the cab. And then you do your trimming, you know, either on this section at the top or maybe on this inside corner to get them to sit flush in order to meet that profile of the floor. So I'll move it real quick here. I see as I back up, you know, what that's supposed to do. So what I'm gonna be doing is basically fine tuning these panels and then cutting out the section of the floorboard that these are gonna replace, hopefully leaving a flange that I can uh, spot weld this to and that would be the flange right there all the way around the truck the truck cab has this flange and this part would actually be coming out and i'd be trying to set the the floor pan right on that flange okay so i've got a section of kind of the most rotten part cut out and wanted to give you a close-up right here so right here there's actually two layers this piece right here is actually the bottom or back section of the cab mount which is on the other side of this uh, piece of metal right here and then this top piece is the actual floorboard itself that goes over the top of the cab mount piece so when you're doing a cab mount replacement it's a big job because the this piece is a lot bigger than what you'd think it was so here's the underside look of where exactly i'm at what i'm talking about is this piece right here actually comes up and attaches to the back of this cab mount so it's, it's not just this piece right here about the size of my hand. It's actually a pretty large section of metal that you've got to cut out whenever you do these uh, cab mount replacements. Now, what I'm going to be doing for my application here today is basically just cutting off the top part uh, of this metal layer, not the bottom part. This actual cab mount down here is still really solid, and it's actually a little heavier gauge metal than the top part. So I'm going to be really careful and just trim out the rust associated with this piece right here and not cut the bottom layer. Okay, so I got the driver's side floor pan out, the new metal, and 
All I'm gonna do is take off a little bit over two and a half inches off the top here to allow me to just to fit it a little bit better. It's a little bit too big for me to set the whole thing in there and set the back end down so that I can get really good measurements on where I need to cut it next. So I'm just gonna cut off a short little section here. It allows me to scoot the entire panel a little further up and set it down in there. Usually when I'm cutting sheet metal, I just use some, some sheet metal shears here to cut it off. This is pretty thick uh, gauge sheet metal. So you can see, I. Started cutting right there. And the only thing I don't like about these shears is if you don't hold it right, you get that little bend uh, in the top there and you gotta beat it back out. In this case, since this is kind of a rough cut, it doesn't necessarily have to be exact. I'm just gonna use my plasma cutter and it'll zip through that in, in no problem. I mean, you can do this, it takes a little bit of time. Just be careful and you gotta bend that up or you can just zip it with a plasma cutter or a cutoff wheel, I mean, either one and uh, go that route. I, I think I'm gonna use plasma cutter just cause it's fun. Okay, so I've got the uh, that front piece cut off just to give me a little extra room in the back here and you can see it sits in there pretty good. Uh, this flare right here is a little bit more upright than it needs to be. Once it's further down like that, you can see it kind of lines up a little bit better once I press it down. So once I get this tacked in, that little flange right there is gonna to need to be beat down a little bit towards the end or towards this piece of metal so that I can tack it. But you can tell that, you know, it's basically sitting in there pretty good. If I press on it, it'll go down a little bit. And really the only area that I see that I've got to trim a little bit more is this side. It's good up against the sidewall here, but then it starts kind of bowing out right here. And you can see it's actually overlapping my weather strip here and I actually want it cut back a little bit so I'm going to be taking off about that much just to cut it back kind of at a diagonal line up to about here and then you can see my clutch pedal um, or the clutch actuator actually is supposed to have a cover on it you can see the holes there and the covers missing so I'm actually going to leave my floorboard a little long like this so it'll cover up that hole a little bit overall I'm really happy about the quality of these floor pans so far and it's a pretty easy job. Obviously, I'm not gonna go step by step on the passenger side when I do this, but I just wanted to kind of show this is what I'm doing uh, for the driver's side, and then I'll get the passenger side done. All right, well, I'm back out here the next day, and I've kind of had some time to ponder about what I'm doing with these floor pans. And one other thing that I wanted to point out before we get started is don't pull your truck inside your shop when you have uh, wet alfalfa in the bed. Uh, it uh, doesn't smell too good right now in here, but that was my fault. I got some hay the other day and didn't even think to get it out of the bed before I pulled it in the truck and let it sit here overnight. But it's got a nice aroma this morning. So I'm back into this project. And as you can see, I've got the uh, sections that were really bad rusted cut out. And then I used some of this uh, Loctite Extend Rust Neutralizer and basically just sprayed it on the top and bottom of the area. After I've kind of contemplated about this and thought about it and pondered it and all that good stuff, I'm to the, I guess I'm to the belief that it's, I'm okay with putting this uh, new floor pan right over the existing floor pan that's still in good shape. So you can see these areas are strong, these areas are strong, and this is the rear end of the cab mount. I've cut myself a little flange over here to weld it to. I'm just going to put this floor pan directly over the existing metal that's already there rather than cutting out exactly, you know, the entire floor pan and then, you know, basically butt welding or overlap welding this new floor pan on it. And there's two reasons why I'm, I'm thinking about doing it this way. First of all, I put that uh, rust neutralizer on it. And secondly, once I weld this into place, what I'm thinking about doing is bedlining the entire floor anyways to kind of act as a, a sound deadener for the truck. So that's going to kind of encapsulate both layers of metal and, and prevent any further oxidation. The other thing I thought about doing was go ahead and doing that to the bottom as well. Once I get this top floor pan welded into place, then I'll actually weld up these seams from the bottom uh, well, I probably can't get to that one, uh, but I can definitely get to this one and this one and that little section there and just kind of weld it from the bottom to create a closed, I guess, compartment uh, for the two pieces of metal. And then I'm going to bed line the bottom of this panel also. And I think that that's going to be uh, more than sufficient to keep this from additional rust. And um, obviously, if this part does end up rusting out eventually, I still have a very solid piece of sheet metal that's going to be welded into the top side. 
and I think that's going to be okay. So that's the plan for now. I'm going to go ahead and move forward with welding this in place and getting that process started. I've got to kind of press down on it as I weld it and press back uh, towards the rear of this compartment. And my thought process is I'm going to tack it right here on this corner, on this uh, round corner, get it to stick down, and then kind of just tack myself uh, across and then ha handle it up there. Well, my welding skills aren't the greatest, I'll admit it, but it's working. It's kind of hard working with uh, just one hand when I'm, I'm really trying to press down on this side to get it to go flush with the floor. And I'm just really having a hard time kind of working around this corner with the steering wheel on my way and my helmet's bumping and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I thought it'd be a good idea just to kind of zip it down to the floor with some uh, sheet metal screws. That way it's snug and, and tight to the floor when I do my welding up this seam. Frankly, you could probably do this all the way around it. If you're just not a good welder or you don't have access to a welder, I don't see there being that much of an issue uh, with just using some sheet metal screws going all the way around the pan itself and then just grinding them down at the end. You know, not too much, but uh, I guess you could use rivets too if you, if you have access to a rivet gun or something. But it's very similar to kind of this pan right here, this cover that's covering up the uh, transmission. And the transfer case, it's just screwed down in too. So if you have access to a welder, great. If you don't, there's some other alternatives that you can use. So you can see that um, I've actually started using more and more of these little sheet metal screws. And it, especially in this corner, like I said, it's just really hard to get in there. And I'm having to kind of get it really tight because there's some different variations in the actual metal up there. And it's just tough to press it down and weld it at the same time. So I just used a couple of screws to zip it down. I've got to work on this corner up here by the uh, gas pedal. You can get that laid down a little bit better. Probably will end up just uh, hammering that as best I can. It's kind of hard to get into. So I might just use some screws to kind of help that lay down. And then, then complete that bead around there. I had this flange that actually kind of came out straight and was just uh, you know sitting straight up in the air. So I laid that over, you know, just beat it down with a hammer. I'll work on it a little bit better. And of course I got to clean out my welds because those look terrible. I'm actually having, uh, I continue to have problems with this welder. It just seems like it's kind of got a mind of its own on the wire. I'm not really sure what's going on. It's never done that to me before. It's usually really dependable. It's a Miller welder, uh, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure out what's going on. Thank God I'm covering this thing up with bed liner and carpet because as one of my old bosses used to say, son, I didn't hire a grinder. I hired a welder. Well, I'm kind of more of a grinder today for some reason, but hopefully I can get my act together soon. You can see where I've got the uh, driver's side floorboard in and actually kind of put some paint around it just to stop the um, the edges from uh, rusting while I had it in the shop or oxidating anyway. Now I've got over to the passenger side. It was probably a little worse than actually the driver's side, uh, mainly because I think you've, you've had this leaking heater core for so long that just kind of came down here and just sat. So this whole entire section was essentially just rotted out. But what I've done is I've cut out everything that's got active rot on it. The rest of it's just kind of surface rust. Now this cab mount, the base of the cab mount, does have some rust on it, but that's mostly just mud and stuff built up uh, over time. And that's really what I was wanting to point out to you guys. The design of this whole entire system, I think, is just terrible because it just allows water to get in the front and settle back here, and it really has nowhere to go. They did build in a little drain hole there, but essentially it's sandwiched between this panel and the top panel coming down on it and it just has nowhere to go so it just sits there and collects one of the things i mentioned when i was talking about putting that floor pan on was i was actually going to get underneath here and weld this section right here to the upper section that's going to be laid down 
And now that I've kind of looked at it and I've seen it, I'm actually not going to do it that way because this, all this crud and water and condensation and things like that that gets inside between these two panels needs to go somewhere. So I think I'm going to leave this open and then just put the floor pan on top of it to where at least all this stuff can kind of drain out those channels to the back and stay dry. It may not be the way they did it from factory, but again, I think from factory, I think it's a mistake. And, and that's why everybody's kind of going through all these rusted out cab mounts and floor mounts and things like that. But other than that, you can see, man, there's a lot of stuff down there. I took out a lot of dirt and crud and rust and just junk uh, in between those two panels. Now I'm gonna clean it all up. That one, as you can tell, I kind of just put some paint around it, just haphazardly, uh, not very good there. I got a bunch of streaks. Uh, just to kind of seal the edges, and then I'm actually going to uh, coat that with bed coating, uh, probably to this side up to about here, and then stop, and then I'm going to work on this side, and then I'll do the same thing over here. And it'll kind of act as a rust barrier, but also as soundproofing uh, for the entire truck. So here we go. All right, so here's the finished product, and I think it turned out pretty well. I put the bed coat on, got this side, passenger side in, got the driver's side in, Went ahead and bed coated the entire bottom of the floor with about three cans of bed liner. Just Rust-Oleum bed liner. It went on really well. It went on smooth. It takes about 48 hours to cure, so I'm kind of at a stopping point. I could work on some other things, but a lot of the stuff I've got to work on is kind of right there. So uh, I'm actually going to stop for this video because I think it's probably getting kind of long and turn this into maybe a two-part video to where I'll do the heater core and some of the changes there and then obviously get into those cab mounts uh, up front and I've got an idea on what I'm going to do with that too so this one I did a little differently some of you may disagree some of you may agree I don't know but on that side I spent a uh, majority of my time uh, welding the panel in I put a couple of screws where I just couldn't quite reach up there at the top and so forth but uh, mostly it's welded all the way around. And on this side, I felt like I should do something different just to kind of show that if you don't have access to a welder or you're just not a very good welder, kind of like me, you can do it with screws. And so I just got some flat uh, kind of flush mount screws and just went all the way around the panel. I did tack it uh, in a couple of places with the welder, but mostly it's uh, put in there with the, uh, the flat uh, screws. And remember, bed coats going over this and carpets going over this. So in the long run, no one's gonna know it's there. I think it's gonna hold just as well. I just used some self-drilling screws. I think they were inch long, self-drilling. And uh, I think it turned out really well, guys. It, it, it feels very solid. It feels the same as that side. So I think from a standpoint of, just depends on what you have access to, you can do a lot in, in your driveway. And these old crusty Fords that tend to rust out, man, you can get after it. But guys, here's another project in the books. One more thing done with the F100 project. It's really coming along and uh, I'm excited to kind of get finally the floor pans done, move on to the cap mounts, move on to the heater core, move on to the body mounts. Yeah, it's kind of, seems like a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, this video is getting a little long, so I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. So this will be a multi-part uh, series on this truck. I kind of intended it to be anyways. I just didn't expect that this exact video would be a multi. Uh, I thought I'd be able to get the cab mounts and uh, the floor pans done, but eh, time catches up on you. And I don't think you guys have uh, more than 30 minutes or so to sit around and watch me blab on about floor pans. So um, here we go. Until next time, guys, take care and God bless.